Let's talk a little bit about hollowing end grain. It's one of those tricky little things that people have a problem with. I'm going to mark center on this blank. Then I'm going to come out about a sixteenth to three thirty second of an inch and draw a second line. Now that second line is where I want to start my tool, but I want to start it in between this four and five o'clock quadrant. And I'm going to start it with my tool where the radius is matching in there. Now my rest is a little bit low right there. Let's raise my rest up. That's going to make me a good entry right there. And if I hold the tool level, I'm just above the tool rest. You can see that there. Now as I come in and I enter on that second line that I drew, just behind center between four and five o'clock with the flute matching that radius, the bevel pushes my gouge into center. As I come in, I can then open up the cut. I can also lift the handle up off the rest, find center and plunge that straight back. Now, if I'm not on center, What's going to happen is I'm going to have a lot of vibration. If you get that vibration, stop, open up that cut a little bit, get center. That's all the way through that blank now. Now I could have gone and got a drill bit, put it in my tailstock, in my Jacobs chuck and done that. Would have done the same thing. But that went through really quick. You want to be careful that that blade may heat up a little bit doing that there's a lot of friction now to open up the cut my left hand rests on the rest my right hand on top of the tool my flute pointed between nine and ten o'clock the bottom wing does the cutting here you stop that give you an overhead view See what happens when I let go of that hand. All the power of the cut is coming from those. I've got three fingers wrapped around there and gently closing those. I don't have to force that cut. But you can. I can close the fingers and push with the handle. And that gets a much more aggressive. Once I get to where that's making that annoying sound, it's time to go to my scrapers. Now I've already removed the center of the blank, so that's the hardest part to get. And I've done that to depth. In this case, I went all the way through, but I would normally just do it to whatever depth I was doing. Say I'm hollowing out a box or a pencil uh, holder. I'm gonna go to some kind of a box scraper. Now mine is less than 90 degrees, radius to off to the right hand side, has an undercut or a relief cut partially down the side, but it doesn't grind all the way to the top. That way I know where the tip of my tool is when it's buried back in this blank. Now the handle comes up to where I am just above the level and I'm just above center as I cut. With this tool, I plunge straight back. The cut starts to get too much. I'm going to push over to center and then step. Down in. I ground this scraper 
out of just a half inch square nose. But I also have them in larger blanks. I've got one that's three quarter inches wide, three eighths of an inch thick, and that one is commercially available and it's ground like this. And you can see it doesn't take me too long to hollow out a blank. Now this is greenwood, so it is moving a little quicker. But got that hollowed all the way through. Get it out from black, you probably see all the way through that. So that didn't take much time at all. Let me show you what's going on with that scraper while it's back in that hole. I mentioned this was Greenwood. It's American Sycamore and it is fresh cut. So it does cut, move, cut quite easily. As I face this off, I'm gonna start with my handle almost level or level and then I drop the handle and arc towards center. If you just come in and keep that handle up and open the flute, you'll hear that that's a much rougher cut. Then dropping the handle and arcing towards center, sneaking up on there. Back to my scraper. Move that rest back so that it acts, you can see what it acts like moving, being down into a box or something. Handle up. You got the handle up. And I just glide across there with that radius edge. Now at the dead center, if you've got a little bit of a nub, come in, find center, handle a little higher, find the back of your piece, and just arc up. As soon as you come sideways again, you're gonna cut a new little nub in the bottom. But I use that radius to slice back and forth. You can see the moisture in there, but you can also see that is cut very, very clean. That's not going to require a lot of sanding when I get down into the bottom of the box. Now, if I come in and I drop that corner in and I pull sideways, and if I've got this sharpened up the side, that can be a very aggressive move. but it will tear fibers out of there and it won't be as clean. Hope that's gonna be some help for you. Now, if you wanna see more of this from me, I'm doing the Wood Turning Worldwide Sympo uh, Online Symposium. If you use my name, Kirk, in the discount window when you sign up, you'll save yourself $10. Thanks for watching.